Bindasara R. C. 297 C. 273 BCE was the second Mauryan emperor of India. He was the son of the dynasty's founder Chandragupta, and the father of its most famous ruler Ashoka. Bindasara's life is not documented as well as the lives of these two emperors. Much of the information about him comes from legendary accounts written several hundred years after his death. Bindasara consolidated the empire created by his father. The 16th century Tibetan Buddhist author Taranatha credits his administration with extensive territorial conquests in southern India, but some historians doubt the historical authenticity of this claim. Topic. Background Ancient and medieval sources have not documented Bindasara's life in detail. Much of the information about him comes from Jain legends focused on Chandragupta and the Buddhist legends focused on Ashoka. The Jain legends, such as Hemachandra's Parashishta Pavan were written more than a thousand years after his death. Most of the Buddhist legends about Ashoka's early life also appear to have been composed by Buddhist writers who lived several hundred years after Ashoka's death, and are of little historical value. While these legends can be used to make several inferences about Bindasara's reign, they are not entirely reliable because of the close association between Ashoka and Buddhism. Buddhist sources that provide information about Bindasara include Divyavadana, including Ashokavadana and Pamsupradhanavadana, Dipavamsa, Mahavamsa, Vamsathapakasini, also known as Mahavamsatika or Mahavamsa Commentary, Samantapasadika, and the 16th century writings of Taranatha. The Jain sources include the 12th century Parashishta Pavan by Hemachandra and the 19th century Rajavali Katha by Devachandra. The Hindu Puranas also mention Bindasara in their genealogies of Mauryan rulers. Some Greek sources also mention him by the name Amatrochates or its variations. Topic: <laughs> Early life. Topic. Parents Bindasara was born to Chandragupta, the founder of the Mauryan Empire. This is attested by several sources, including the various Puranas and the Mahavamsa. The Dipavamsa, on the other hand, names Bindasara as the son of the king Shushunaga. The prose version of Ashokavadana states that Bindasara was the son of Nanda, and a tenth-generation descendant of Bimbisara. Like Dipavamsa, it omits Chandragupta's name altogether. The metrical version of Ashokavadana contains a similar genealogy with some variations. Chandragupta had a marriage alliance with the Seleucids, which has led to speculation that Bindasara's mother might have been Greek or Macedonian. However, there is no evidence of this. According to the 12th century Jain writer Hemachandra's Parashishta Pavan, the name of Bindasara's mother was Durdara. Topic. Names The name, Bindasara, with slight variations, is attested by the Buddhist texts such as Dipavamsa and Mahavamsa, Bindasaro, the Jain texts such as Parashishta Pavan, as well as the Hindu texts such as Vishnu Purana, Vindasara. Other Puranas give different names for Chandragupta's successor, these appear to be clerical errors. For example, the various recensions of Bhagavata Purana mention him as Varasara or Varakara. The different versions of Vayu Purana call him Badrasara or Nandasara. The Mahavashya names Chandragupta's son as Amitragata, Sanskrit for slayer of enemies. The Greek writers Strabo and Athenaeus call him Elitrochades and Amitrochates, respectively. These names are probably derived from the Sanskrit title. In addition, Bindasara was given the title Devanampriya, the beloved of the gods, which was also applied to his successor Ashoka. The Jain work Rajavali Katha states that his birth name was Simasena. Both Buddhist and Jain texts mention a legend about how Bindasara got his name. Both accounts state that Chandragupta's minister Chanakya used to mix small doses of poison in the emperor's food to build his immunity against possible poisoning attempts. One day, Chandragupta, not knowing about the poison, shared his food with his pregnant wife. According to the Buddhist legends Mahavamsa and Mahavamsa Tika, the queen was seven days away from delivery at this time. Chanakya arrived just as the queen ate the poisoned morsel. Realizing that she was going to die, he decided to save the unborn child. He cut off the queen's head and cut open her belly with a sword to take out the fetus. Over the next seven days, he placed the fetus in the belly of a goat freshly killed each day. 
After seven days, Chandragupta's son was born. He was named Bindasara, because his body was spotted with drops Bindu, of goat's blood. The Jain text Parashishta Parvan names the queen as Durdara, and states that Chanakya entered the room the very moment she collapsed. To save the child, he cut open the dead queen's womb and took the baby out. By this time, a drop Bindu, of poison had already reached the baby and touched its head. Therefore, Chanakya named him Bindasara, meaning, the strength of the drop. Topic. Family The prose version of Ashokavadana names three sons of Bindasara, Sashima, Ashoka and Vigatashoka. The mother of Ashoka and Vigatashoka was a woman named Subhadrangi, the daughter of a Brahmin of the Champa city. When she was born, an astrologer predicted that one of her sons would be a king, and the other a religious man. When she grew up, her father took her to Bindasara's palace in Pataliputra. Bindasara's wives, jealous of her beauty, trained her as the royal barber. Once, when the emperor was pleased with her hairdressing skills, she expressed her desire to be a queen. Bindasara was initially apprehensive about her low class, but made her the chief queen after learning about her Brahmin descent. The couple had two sons, Ashoka and Vigatashoka. Bindasara did not like Ashoka because his limbs were hard to the touch. Another legend in Divyavadana names Ashoka's mother as Janapadakalyani. According to the Vamsathapakasini Mahavamsatika, the name of Ashoka's mother was Dharma. The Mahavamsa states that Bindasara had 101 sons from 16 women. The eldest of these was Sumana, and the youngest was Tishya or Tissa. Ashoka and Tishya were born to the same mother. Topic. Rain Historian Upinder Singh estimates that Bindasara ascended the throne around 297 BCE. Topic. Territorial conquests The 16th century Tibetan Buddhist author Taranatha states that Chanakya, one of Bindasara's great lords, destroyed the nobles and kings of 16 towns and made him master of all the territory between the Western and the Eastern Sea, Arabian Sea and the Bay of Bengal. According to some historians, this implies conquest of Deccan by Bindasara, while others believe that this only refers to suppression of revolts. Sailendra Nath Sen notes that the Mauryan Empire already extended from the Western Sea beside Saurashtra to the Eastern Sea beside Bengal during Chandragupta's reign. Besides, Ashoka's inscriptions found in southern India do not mention anything about Bindasara's conquest of Deccan southern India. Based on this, Sen concludes that Bindasara did not extend the Mauryan Empire, but managed to retain the territories he inherited from Chandragupta. K. Krishna Reddy, on the other hand, argues that Ashoka's inscriptions would have boasted about his conquest of southern India, had he captured Deccan. Reddy, therefore, believes that the Mauryan Empire extended up to Mysore during Bindasara's reign. According to him, the southernmost kingdoms were not a part of the Mauryan Empire, but probably acknowledged its suzerainty. Alan Danielu believes that Bindasara inherited an empire that included the Deccan region, and made no territorial additions to the empire. Danielu, however, believes that Bindasara brought the southern territories of the Cheras, the Cholas and the Satyaputras under nominal Mauryan control, although he could not overcome their armies. His theory is based on the fact that the ancient Tamil literature alludes to Vamba Maurya Mauryan conquest, although it does not provide any details about the Mauryan expeditions. According to Danielu, Bindasara's main achievement was organization and consolidation of the empire he inherited from Chandragupta. Topic. Takshashila revolt The Mahavamsa suggests that Bindasara appointed his son Ashoka as the viceroy of Ujjayani. Ashokavadana states that Bindasara sent Ashoka to lay siege to Takshashila. The emperor refused to provide any weapons or chariots for Ashoka's expedition. The Devatas deities, then miraculously brought him soldiers and weapons. When his army reached Takshashila, the residents of the city approached him. They told him that they only opposed Bindasara's oppressive ministers, they had no problem with the emperor or the prince. Ashoka then entered the city without opposition, and the Devatas declared that he would rule the entire earth one day. Shortly before Bindasara's death, there was a second revolt in Takshashila. This time, Sashima was sent to quell the rebellion, but he failed in the task.
Topic: Ministers. The Rajavali Katha states that Chandragupta's Prime Minister Chanakya accompanied him to the forest for retirement after handing over the administration to Bindasara. However, the Parashishta Pavan states that Chanakya continued to be Bindasara's Prime Minister. It mentions a legend about Chanakya's death. Chanakya asked the emperor to appoint a man named Sabandhu as one of his ministers. However, Sabandhu wanted to become a higher minister and grew jealous of Chanakya. So, he told Bindasara that Chanakya had cut open the belly of his mother. After confirming the story with the nurses, Bindasara started hating Chanakya. As a result, Chanakya, who was already a very old man by this time, retired and decided to starve himself to death. Meanwhile, Bindasara came to know about the detailed circumstances of his birth, and implored Chanakya to resume his ministerial duties. When Chanakya refused to oblige, the emperor ordered Sabandhu to pacify him. Sabandhu, while pretending to appease Chanakya, burned him to death. Shortly after this, Sabandhu himself had to retire and become a monk due to Chanakya's curse. Ashokavadana suggests that Bindasara had 500 royal counselors. It names two officials, Kalataka and Radhagupta, who helped his son Ashoka became the emperor after his death. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Foreign Relations. Bindasara maintained friendly diplomatic relations with the Greeks. Diamachos of Plataea was the ambassador of Seleucid Emperor Antiochus I at Bindasara's court. Diamachos seems to have written a treatise entitled. On piety, Peri Eusebius, the third-century Greek writer Athenaeus, in his Deipnosophistae, mentions an incident that he learned from Hegesander's writings. Bindasara requested Antiochus to send him sweet wine, dried figs, and a sophist. Antiochus replied that he would send the wine and the figs, but the Greek laws forbade him to sell a sophist. Diodorus states that the king of Palibothra, Pataliputra, the Maurian capital, welcomed a Greek author, Iambulus. This king is usually identified as Bindasara. Pliny states that the Egyptian king Philadelphus sent an envoy named Dionysius to India. According to Sailendra Nath Sen, this appears to have happened during Bindasara's reign. <inaudible> Religion The Buddhist texts Samantapasadika and Mahavamsa suggest that Bindasara followed Brahmanism, calling him a Brahmana Bhato, votary of the Brahmanas. According to the Jain sources, Bindasara's father Chandragupta adopted Jainism before his death. However, they are silent on Bindasara's faith, and there is no evidence to show that Bindasara was a Jain. A fragmentary inscription at Sanchi, in the ruins of the 3rd century BCE Temple 40, perhaps refers to Bindasara, which might suggest his connection with the Buddhist order at Sanchi. Some Buddhist texts mention that an Ajivika astrologer or priest at Bindasara's court prophesied the future greatness of the prince Ashoka. The Pamsupradhanavadana part of Divyavadana names this man as Pingalavatsa. The Vamsathapakasini the Mahavamsa commentary names this man as Janasana, based on a commentary on Majima Nikaya. The Divyavadana version states that Pingalavatsa was an Ajivika Paravrajaka wandering teacher. Bindasara asked him to assess the ability of the princes to be the next emperor, as the two watched the princes play. Pingalavatsa recognized Ashoka as the most suitable prince, but did not give a definitive answer to the emperor, since Ashoka was not Bindasara's favorite son. He, however, told Queen Subhadrangi of Ashoka's future greatness. The queen requested him to leave the kingdom before the emperor forced him to provide an answer. Pingalavatsa returned to the court after Bindasara's death. The Mahavamsa commentary states that Janasana, also Jarasona or Jarasana was the queen's Kalupaga, ascetic of the royal household. He had been born as a python during the period of Kasapa Buddha, and had become very wise after listening to the discussions of the bhikkhus. Based on his observations of the queen's pregnancy, he prophesied Ashoka's future greatness. He appears to have left the court for unknown reasons. When Ashoka grew up, the queen told him that Janasana had forecast his greatness. Ashoka then sent a carriage to bring back Janasana, who was residing at an unnamed place far from the capital, Pataliputra. On the way back to Pataliputra, he was converted to Buddhism by one Asagutta. Based on these legends, scholars such as A. L. Basham conclude that Bindasara patronized the Ajivikas. <laughs> <laughs> Death and succession Historical evidence suggests that Bindasara died in the 270s BCE. 
According to Upinda Singh, Bindasara died around 273 BCE. Alan Danielu believes that he died around 274 BCE. Sailendra Nath Sen believes that he died around 273 to 272 BCE, and that his death was followed by a four-year struggle of succession, after which his son Ashoka became the emperor in 269 to 268 BCE. According to the Mahavamsa, Bindasara reigned for 28 years. The Vayu Purana, which names Chandragupta's successor as Badrasara, states that he ruled for 25 years. The Buddhist text Manjushri Mula Kalpa claims that he ruled for 70 years, which is not historically accurate. All sources agree that Bindasara was succeeded by his son Ashoka, although they provide varying descriptions of the circumstances of this succession. According to the Mahavamsa, Ashoka had been appointed as the viceroy of Ujjain. On hearing about his father's fatal illness, he rushed to the capital, Pataliputra. There, he killed his 99 brothers, leaving only Tishya, and became the new emperor. According to the prose version of Ashokavadana, Bindasara's favorite son Sashima once playfully threw his gauntlet at the prime minister, Kalataka. The minister thought that Sashima was unworthy of being an emperor. Therefore, he approached the 500 royal councillors, and suggested appointing Ashoka as the emperor after Bindasara's death, pointing out that the Devatas had predicted his rise as the universal ruler. Some time later, Bindasara fell sick and decided to hand over the administration to his successor. He asked his ministers to appoint Sashima as the emperor, and Ashoka as the governor of Takshashila. However, by this time, Sashima had been sent to Takshashila, where he was unsuccessfully trying to quell a rebellion. When the emperor was on his deathbed, the ministers suggested appointing Ashoka as the temporary emperor, and reappointing Sashima as the emperor after his return from Takshashila. However, Bindasara became angry when he heard this suggestion. Ashoka then declared that if he was meant to be Bindasara's successor, the Devatas would appoint him as the emperor. The Devatas then miraculously placed the royal crown on his head, while Bindasara died. When Sashima heard this news, he advanced towards Pataliputra to claim the throne. However, he died after being tricked into a pit of burning charcoal by Ashoka's well-wisher Radhagupta. The Rajavali Katha states that Bindasara retired after handing over the throne to Ashoka. Topic. In popular culture Gerson Dar Cunha portrayed Bindasara in the 2001 Bollywood film, Ahsoka. Samir Dharmadakari plays the role of Bindasara in the television series, Chakravartin Ashoka Samrat. Siddharth Nigam plays Bindasara in the television series Chandra Nandini. <laughs> <laughs> 